Welcome back to Flight Insight Test Prep. We're reviewing everything you need to know to pass your test. This is Private Pilot Knowledge Test Prep Chapter 9, Sources of Flight Information. After finishing this chapter, you'll be ready to try the practice test questions that go along with the course. The FAA test will require you to be able to read and interpret weather reports and forecasts in their raw form. So let's start by looking at a weather observation called a METAR. METARs give current weather observed at an indicated time at an official reporting station. Here are some METARs that you'll need to interpret on the test. The elements of the report make up the complete weather observation. First is the reporting station. This first one is KINK, or Winkler County Airport in Texas. The date and time in Zulu of the report are indicated next. This one was observed on the 12th of the month at 1845 Zulu. The winds are reported as being out of 110 degrees at 12 knots, with gusts up to 18 knots. The visibility is given as 15 statute miles. The sky is clear. There are no clouds to report. The temperature and dew point are 25 and 17 respectively, and this is in degrees Celsius. Finally, the altimeter setting is 30.00 inches of mercury. If there's any precipitation or weather phenomenon present, there'll be a code to indicate that. Here at LAX in California, there is BR reported. What's BR? It's mist. Or if you want to be able to remember it, baby rain, BR. Over at Midway in Illinois, there is plain old rain, indicated by RA. If it were light or heavy, there'd be a minus or plus sign after it. FG is the code for fog at Kennedy Airport. Cloud coverage and height is given in hundreds of feet AGL. Here at Midway, there's an overcast sky at 700 feet. Sometimes remarks will be added, such as this one, which means rain began 35 minutes after the hour. Cloud coverage reports use octas to break the sky into eighths to indicate the fraction of the sky obscured. Here, there is one eighth of the sky covered at 3,000 feet, so the code indicated here will be used in the METAR. Scattered layers are two eighths through half of the sky obscured. Broken layers are five eighths through seven eighths. And finally, an overcast layer is the entire sky, eight eighths of the sky covered. METARs can report multiple layers. Here we have a scattered layer at 2,000 feet and a broken layer at 3,000. A cloud ceiling constitutes the lowest layer of clouds that cover at least half the sky. So that would be a broken or overcast layer. So here the ceiling is 3,000 feet, even though scattered clouds exist below that. Pilot reports, or PIREPs, complement METARs by adding actual observations from flight crews in the air. Let's look at one of the PIREPs from the test examples. First, the type of report is given. This one is routine, but an urgent report would use the code UUA. The location is over Oklahoma City and Tulsa. The time is 1800 Zulu. The report is for flight level 120, or 12,000 feet. This pilot flew a BE-90, or a Beechcraft King Air. The sky coverage is a broken layer starting at 1,800 feet with tops at 5,500 feet and an overcast layer from 7,200 to 8,900 feet. The skies are clear above that. The temperature is minus 7 at that altitude, and the winds are out of 80 degrees at 21 knots. Turbulence is reported as light between 5,500 and 7,200, and icing is light to moderate rhyme-type icing from 7,200 to 8,900. Observations are for current conditions, but forecasts predict weather into the future. A terminal aerodrome forecast looks at predicted weather for the next day or two for a larger airport. Here's a TAF for Oklahoma City. The report was issued on the 5th of the month at 1130 Zulu. The forecast is valid for the period from the 5th at 1200 Zulu through the 6th at 1800 Zulu, so it's a 30-hour valid period. The winds are forecast from 140 degrees at 8 knots, with 5 miles of visibility in baby rain, right? Mist, with a cloud ceiling broken at 3,000 feet. Now, even though the valid period is 30 hours, the TAF will show temporary changes to the forecast for parts of the valid period. Here's a temporary change between 13 and 1600 Zulu, and over this time period it predicts visibility to drop to a mile and a half in mist. 
After that temporary update from 1600 Zulu, the conditions are forecast to improve somewhat. While the tempo update is a weather condition predicted to come and go, a becoming prediction says weather will transition over some time between 22 and 2400 Zulu to these conditions. Finally, after 0000, 000, 000 Zulu, there's a 40% probability of some more nasty weather ahead, followed by clear skies again toward the end of the forecast valid period. Winds and temperature law forecasts are also given out to aid in navigation and flight planning. They're provided over specific locations, such as VOR stations. Here's a report for the MKC VOR near Kansas City. At 3,000 feet, the wind direction and speed are given. This is 050 degrees at 7 knots. Above 3,000 feet, temperatures are also included. Notice that at 30,000 feet, the minus sign is dropped, as it's just assumed that all temperatures are below 0 Celsius up there. When the wind is very strong, over 100 knots, 50 is added to the two-digit wind direction code, and the 100 is subtracted from the wind speed. So here we have winds out of 230 degrees at 106 knots with a minus 49 degree temperature. Why do they do it this way? Because they only have room for that many characters on each uh, string of this winds aloft report.